Good morning. You're probably wondering why I'm standing here, but <laughs> Synod, Dakota Western Synod in Watford City. And so I am reading this Bishop Craig. So, so I'm happy to be here. Hopefully I won't screw up things too badly. But there, there it is. Um, before I start, the hymn numbers are not the right hymn numbers. So Cindy will be telling us which songs to sing when it comes that time. Announcements. Uh, next Sunday, Becky is starting, and Amber too, a new summer worship series called On the Chosen. Have any of you watched the Chosen series at all? It's a, it's a series that it came out oh, a few years ago about the, the life of Christ through the eyes of the disciples. And if you ever get a chance to see it, um, you have to see it through an app. It's, I think it's also on Netflix now and some of those. It's excellent. It, for me, watching The Chosen, it made me want to read the Bible because they, they use so much scripture in it. And of course, it's a series, so there's some things that aren't totally correct with the Bible, but it makes you want to learn when you watch it. And so they're gonna do a few um, sermons doing short clips from some of the chosen episodes that were very meaningful. I, I, would, I would hope you would. Um, tonight, actually, the first episode of the fourth season is coming out at six o'clock on the Chosen app or on YouTube, or I think on Facebook Live, I believe they said was where you could want to get into the fourth season. So hopefully you'll get, you'll like it and, and want to see more of it if you haven't seen it. I, to me, it was almost life-changing because I have watched those episodes six times because <laughs> every time you learn something new about Jesus and about the Bible, so that particular series. And then uh, Sunday, June 30th, um, okay. So that we've just they they have decided as the worship committee to worship together as with all of our churches. So it'll be a worship and potluck at Calvary at 10 o'clock. That'll be the only service for our four churches on June 30th. Uh, Vacation Bible School is July 14th and the 15th at Springbrook Springbrook Camp, and I think they're looking for more campers to go. So if you have little children that want to go, make sure you sign them up. Uh, anybody else have announcements for today? If not, we'll open with confession and forgiveness on page 94. And I'm going to use the right side. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering song today is page 838, Beautiful Savior.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, throughout time you free the oppressed, heal the sick, and make whole all that you have made. Look with compassion on the world wounded by sin, and by your power restore us to wholeness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Testing. The first reading today is Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 15. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six you should labor and do all your but the seventh day is a Sabbath. Remember that you live in the land of Egypt. And the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And Psalm 8, Psalm 81, 1 through 10 is printed in your bulletin. We'll read it responsibly. Sing with joy to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon and at the full moon, the day of our feast. God laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph going out over the land of Egypt where I heard a voice I did not know. You called on me in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and tested you at the waters of Meribah. Here. There shall be no strange God among you, and you shall not worship a foreign God. The second reading is 2 Corinthians 4, verses 5 through 12. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in ours, so that it may be from us. We are afflicted in every but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today is different from what's in the bulletin. So if you want to rise for the gospel reading. The gospel reading comes from Luke 24, 26 to 49. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, 
for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. He took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. You can be seated. So this is a sermon from Bishop Craig, his words to us today. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, amen. First of all, on behalf of Bishop Craig, we receive his thanks and praise for our congregation and congregations all across the 159 congregations of the Western North Dakota Synod for our financial and prayerful support of our shared ministry and mission through local congregations, the Synod and our churchwide communities, for your support of the rostered ministers, the Synod authorized ministers and elected volunteers who serve alongside us throughout the year. For your patience in locations across our Synod who are currently in that season of the call process. And for your unending belief that God is with us and for us in all that you say and do, calling us to witness to Jesus wherever we live. Additionally, Bishop Craig also gives his thanks for our openness to allowing our rostered minister or synod authorized minister to be at the Synod Assembly on this particular Sunday. Synod Assembly is meeting this year for the first time at Watford City. And believe it or not, this is the only Sunday of the year when our ministers are able to be together in the same space at the same time for a worship service where they don't need to do anything but be present. Words cannot express what a gift that is for them. Thank you for allowing us to be church together in this way. It is a true witness to the relationship we have with one another in the one body of Christ. Much of what happens each year at Synod Assembly is about relationships. Relationships we are invited into by God and with God. Relationships with people we know and love deeply. Even relationships with others that we may have never, we may never meet in person, but are joined together as part of the great cloud of witnesses, as the writer of Hebrews reminds us. The truth of the matter is, relationships are a big deal to the God of all creation and to those of us who claim to be followers of Jesus the Christ. Relationships are centered in Jesus' instruction to us to be witnesses of these things, witnesses of the many relationships that God invites us into. Now, as far as I know, no one calls a congregation of the Western North Dakota Synod their faith home was present physically when Jesus informed the disciples that they were witnesses, again, as far as I know. So what does this mean as Martin Luther is so well known for asking? What does this mean that Jesus was in fact, has in fact called you and me to be witnesses as we live out our faith on this side of the resurrection, a few thousand years after his encounter with the disciples in the ancient world? Well, in a formal sense of the beginning, we might think of the sacrament of holy baptism. As water flows freely and promises are made about relationships, we begin our journey of witnessing these things. In baptism, you and I are called to be witnesses as we gather among God's faithful people throughout our life together in this world. In baptism, you and I are called to be witnesses as we receive God's holy word in scripture and celebrate the meal Jesus gave to us where all are welcome and none are excluded. 
In baptism, you and I are called to be witnesses as we pass down from generation to generation the prayer that Jesus teaches us and other ancient rhythms of the church like the creeds and Ten Commandments. And also connected to teachings in our Lutheran Christian tradition like the small catechism or the confessions that we find in the Book of Concord or even more specifically to those of us who are part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. The teachings found in social policy statements social messages and social statements. In baptism, you and I are called to be witnesses who nurture each other in faith and prayer. Trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for each other and the world God has made, and work for justice and peace. Here's what I believe to be the truth that we can hold onto always and in all ways. Jesus doesn't say to the first disciples or to any of us in 2024 that we will be witnesses or that we can only be witnesses if we accept Jesus into our hearts and say a little magic prayer. Jesus doesn't say to the first disciples or to any of us in 2024 that we will be witnesses whenever it fits into our overly scheduled lives or to be a witness on social media, especially if you use eye-catching memes. But don't worry about being a witness when you're sitting next to a fellow child of God, like many of you are doing right now. And Jesus isn't begging you and me, please, please, you guys, I'm serious this time. Please be my witnesses, please. As Luther Seminary professor Carolyn Lewis describes it, as it turns out, witnessing is not voluntary, but a state of being. Sisters and brothers in Christ, as we live into this state of being, as we witness to Jesus, we grow in relationship with God through our Savior Jesus and with each other as God's children. Throughout this year's Synod Assembly, voting members and visitors were invited to witness, to witness the amazing ways and places that Jesus is active and alive in the world today as the Spirit breathes through you and me to witness the obvious fact that we aren't going to get this right all the time, but that doesn't mean we should stop trying. To witness, as our keynote speakers Dave and Joe at the Synod Assembly inspired us to do because our differences do in fact make a difference. And for that truth, we give God thanks and praise. Joe and Dave are part of a ministry called Just Move. They will be offering six different online classes for our Synod in June, July, and August. These are free classes offered every other Thursday at noon Central Time and open to anyone who is interested. More information is on the Synod's website or our voting members will have the information that they received at the assembly. Back to Professor Carolyn Lewis for a bit. How often we forget, she states, that our words and deeds or lack thereof are indeed giving witness to how we imagine God to be. And we might want to stop and consider just what those words and deeds are saying about God. We are witnesses does not depend on our acceptance or agreement or approval. We are witnesses does not depend on our readiness or recognition of responsiveness. We are witnesses just is. And there is the good news. Professor Lewis concludes her reflection on Jesus calling us to be witnesses by saying, witnessing is not optional. It's not an intermittent activity of faith. It's not something you can decide to do one way and then one day and then resolve to take the next day off. It's constant. It's a way of life. It's who you are. And it's time, more than time, when it's post-resurrection time to get used to it. Sisters and brothers in Christ, blessings as you leave worship today. As you witness to the good news of the birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus the Christ, the Savior of the world, may your witness be bold and your proclamation speak truth in all that you say and do and with whomever God places along your path. You are witnesses of these things. Go and never stop sharing that good news. 
Thanks be to God. Amen. Our next song, 8, 821, we'll be singing it twice. rise for the Apostles' Creed, found on page 105. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the ho born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers of intercession. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Guide your church to expressions of faith that bring rest and release 
Test your faithful people to be attentive to the spiritual, physical, and societal weariness of our neighbors, that we proclaim your grace through tangible acts of mercy and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Keep us mindful of the rhythms of nature as the days lengthen and the seasons shift toward summer. Grant relief to areas facing flooding or drought and bring favorable weather for the flourishing of crops, gardens, and orchards. Lord, in your mercy. Where there is affliction in our world, bring healing. Where world leaders are perplexed, bring clarity of vision. Give a spirit of discernment to political advisors, institutional researchers, economic analysts, and all vocations that inform the work of governments and policymakers. Lord, in your mercy. Provide, provide wholeness and respite to all who are weary, those who struggle in any way and those who care for them. We pray for Jim Brauker, Wilbur Castile, Sharon Gilland, Scott Hall, Judy Harding, Don Haugano, Leona Hockadal, Dean and Lois Knutsvig, Jim Lindsay, Andrea Nightgard, Sharon Peterson, Josh Smith, Shirley Botney, Louise and Lyle Winfaldit, Rollin and Joyce Walter, and the family and friends of John Benter. Strengthen first responders and healthcare workers in their times of exhaustion or frustration. Lord, in your mercy. Stir our hearts toward abundant generosity among neighbors who experience hunger and food and insecurity. Bless feeding ministries and community food efforts, especially community gardens, farmers markets, and food pantries. Open both our hearts and our tables. Lord, in your mercy. We remember the communion of saints whose lives make visible the saving life of Jesus Christ. Guide us by their example to embody the treasure of your love for the sake of our world until we come to our final rest in you. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Never mind. The peace of Christ be with you always. <laughs> you can share the peace. What? Oh, okay. Peace to everybody. <laughs> now we'll have our offering.
Our offering song has created me a clean heart. We sing the first two lines twice. The words are in your, in your bulletin. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory, through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending song is 723. out a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great and the spirits of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait you fixed your sight on your servants plight my weakness you did spurn so from east to west shall my name be blessed the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, the world is about to turn. I am small, my God, my all, who work great things in me. And your mercy will last from depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame to those who would you yearn. You will show your might, put the mouth be, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, the world is about to turn. 
From the halls of power to the fortress tower, the stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more, the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, the world is about to turn. My heart will sing of the day you bring, the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to age, remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us, the conqueror's crushing grasp. This saving world that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near, the world is about to turn. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. Have a good week. Oh, thank you.